Welcome to this Getting Started with Connector Designer video. Connector Designer is a code-free visual tool for creating and modifying simple searches against third-party data sources. Connector Designer is intended to be used by users with experience at working with REST services or SQL databases, giving them the ability to set up connections and simple searches without needing coding skills. In this video, which follows on from the Getting Started REST video, we will demonstrate how to create a simple connector in Connector Designer to connect to and search a SQL data source. Many of the key concepts were covered in the Getting Started REST video, so in this video we'll concentrate on the differences when working with SQL data sources. Starting from the Connector Designer Overview window, we will start by creating a new connector. We will give this new connector a name, MySQL Connector. We will then configure the schema and optional charting scheme for this connector. Schemas may be existing schemas created for other connectors or from I2Analyze, or a new schema may be created using the I2Analyze Schema Designer. We now select the data source type, which for this example is SQL. We then click Continue to provide the connection details for the data source. Firstly, we select the database type. Connector Designer supports Oracle and Microsoft SQL databases. For this example, we select Microsoft SQL. We then provide the server's location in the form of its address and port, and then the login details required to access the required data source. Finally, we select a database to connect to, in this case, TestDB. We then click Create to create the connector. This may take a short while to finish. Once the connector has been created, we will create a query in order to retrieve data from the SQL table or view. A list of the available tables in the database is displayed. The search we are going to build will search for a person and their associated addresses and phones. As this information is contained across all of these tables, we will choose to include all the tables to retrieve data from and then click Select. We will now create a service. Remember that the service we create provides the searches available to the user of the connector. After clicking Add Service, we can give our search service a name, Find People by Full Name. For this service, we will check the Persistent Record Identifier box, as our SQL database always provides the same identifier for a given record. We then provide a description of this service's purpose. Clicking Add will allow us to start mapping the fields in our source database to our target schema. For our search, we will start with the person entity from the schema, which is dragged into the target area. We also need the access to and resides links for our address and phone data. It should be noted that this part of the process is identical to the process for a REST connector. We then begin to map the database fields from our SQL database to the target properties. For our example, we map the person ID, full name, date of birth, and gender. Note that for SQL databases, we cannot change the field type or provide transformations for the database fields like we did for the REST connector. For our links, we now need to populate the from and to entities. For the access link, this is from person to phone. Using the copy and paste function, we can copy the mappings we've already set up for the person entity to the link end. We then map the phone number to both the identify and phone number target properties, as we assume that the phone number is unique. We then repeat the process for the resides at link, assigning person as the from and address as the to. Then we map the relevant fields to the target address properties as we have done before. Now we configure the input, which configures what the user of the service is required to input to use the search. For our example, we only require the user to provide the full name to search for. We set the type of input expected, in this case a single line string, and set it as mandatory as we can't run the search without something to look for. The rest of the properties will be provided by the results from the database, so we make these not visible so that they are not displayed as search parameters. 
The last step is to set up the joins between the tables. In our source database, the values we require are contained in different tables, so we need to join these tables using the common record values to gain the full picture. The person table is the main table in the database that provides details of the people, including name, date of birth and gender, but the table also provides fields to link them into other tables, phone link and address link in this example. We can use these values to set up the joins. To create a join, we first select the from table, which in our example is person. We then click add row to build the join. We will start by creating the joins necessary to associate the phones in the phone table with the people in the person table via the person phone table. We need to join the phone link field in the person table with the phone link field in the person phone table. We now need another join row, so we click add row again. This time we need to join the person link field in the person phone table to the person link field in the phones table. So now we have linked the person table to the phones table so that we can retrieve the phones associated with each person. The address tables follow the same structure and relationships with the person table, so we can now set up the joins in the same way. We have now set up our service in full. We have selected our target items and properties and mapped the fields from our target database to them. We have defined the input our service user is expected to provide and we have set up the joins between the different source tables so that we can retrieve the necessary data. Now we can publish our connector. This will take a short while. Once published, we can click test to open the external searches tool. We now open the search we have just created, find people by full name, using the MySQL connector. Next we provide our search full name, Maureen Pinkston, and click Run. We then enter the authentication details required by the SQL database, and then run the search. It has returned Maureen as well as the phones and addresses associated with her in the database. We choose to copy these to a new chart so we can visualise the connections. In summary, in this video we've looked at how to set up a connector for a SQL data source in Connector Designer. We've selected the tables we wish to retrieve the information from, and mapped the fields to the properties in the schema. We've looked at how to configure the joins between the SQL tables so that we could retrieve associated information, and then publish the resulting connector. We hope that these videos have been helpful, and that you can now make a start at creating your own connectors for SQL or REST data sources.